Forgive me. I've been testing you to determine if you had the metal to endure this long and arduous path. It seems my worries were unfounded. There is but one other thing I can do to offer you guidance. Let my hand rest upon you for but a moment. If you're just starting Elden Ring for the first time in 2024, or you've come back to the Lands Between to grab some more levels, there are tons of ways you can increase your runes gained hidden within items and game mechanics. Today we're going to be taking a look at all the ways you can boost your rune count and the math behind it so you don't feel so maidenless halfway through your playthrough. So let's get ready to take a look at the best ways to boost your rune intake, hop on Torn at the first steps, and get after it. One of the very first ways you can boost rune intake is to track down some Gold Pickled Falfi. The Gold Pickled Falfoot is a rare and valuable item that can boost runes gained by 30% for 3 minutes. The effect isn't removed when you just rest at a side of grace, however, the effect does get removed when you fast travel. You can find this item in various locations throughout the lands between, or craft it yourself using a cookbook and some ingredients. Since crafting this item is the best way to stock up on it in mass amounts, you'll need a few things in your inventory to make that happen. The first is a crafting kit, which is a key item that you can buy at the very start of the game from Kali the Merchant, who's located in the Church of Ella, which is about a 9 iron away from your starting point at the first steps. It only costs 300 runes, which as prices go is extremely reasonable, and while you're there you can start your cookbook collection with a few different recipe books, which cost you a total of 2300 runes with the kit included. The second item you're going to need is the Missionary's Cookbook Volume 2, which can be found by taking the highlighted path to Murkwater Cave. The cave can be found on the west side of the shallow river that flows off the northern edge of Agia Lake. Traveling there really isn't the issue though, it's the invader that you run into along the way. In order to enter the cave, you'll need to defeat Bloody Finger Nergis, who at the very start of the game can be quite a challenge. If you can survive long enough, Yura will step in and assist you in finishing the job, and along with clearing the way to your Falfoot recipe, you'll also grab the Dagger Reduvia for your trouble. Once you finally get inside Murkwater Cave, you won't need to be a rocket scientist to figure out where to go since it really isn't that big of an area. It's actually just a short run to the back of the cave, past a few tripwire alarms and a few enemies, and finally a yellow fog door leading to a room with a campsite and a chest. The mini boss fight isn't initiated as soon as you step through the veil, instead you'll have to pop the top on the chest to initiate a fight with Patches the Untethered. Once you open the chest, you'll get some dialogue with Patches, and then he'll eventually drop down from his Overwatch position to engage you. If you've ever played From Software titles in the past, you'll likely recognize the infamous Patches, who's made an appearance in every Soul Series game except for Dark Souls 2. He's almost like a calling card whose primary function is to catch you off guard and to trick you into death as often as he can. Patches is a weasel in Elden Ring just like he is in every other game, and after beating him within an inch of his life, or in this case half health, Patches will surrender, and if you accept his surrender, he'll become a merchant and have a far developing questline throughout the game. After his defeat, you'll also receive the Grovel for Mercy gesture to add to your collection, and after reloading the area, the Patches Emporium will be open for business. Within his store, Patches sells 3 golden foul feet for 600 runes a pop, but what you're really after here is the Missionary's Cookbook Volume 2, which will allow you to craft as many gold pickled foul feet as you like, as long as you have the ingredients for them. The first ingredient is located within the Mistwood, and using the Church of Ella as a basic start point, if you follow the highlighted path to the Mistwood outskirts side of Grace, you can start your collection almost immediately. From here you can just summon Torrent and travel east into the woodline where you'll notice a small pond surrounded by a few rune bears. But if you stay on target, you can grab what you need and get out without a scratch. Within the pond, you can pick up more than a handful of gold fireflies, which are only found near bodies of water that are close to minor earth trees. They can be found in quite a few locations, but as farming spots go, this one's quick, easy, and can be done very early on. After collecting the fireflies, just return to the side of grace to reset, and then just rinse and repeat the process until you're satisfied with your stock. The best place to farm the second ingredient is located on the northwestern shore of the Weeping Peninsula near the 4th Church of America, which is a pretty long haul even on Torrent, but you can reach it without any real difficulty if you follow the highlighted route on the map. Once you arrive at the church, you can light the side of grace, which will act as your primary jump off point for this particular farming run. 
After taking a short rest at the side of Grace, you can summon Torrent and hop over the broken southern wall, and once outside, you'll need to head west, dropping down a few steep ledges to the beach below. Before setting off on this unique hunting excursion, you may want to grab a bow, which can be purchased at the start of the game from the Twin Maiden Husks in the Round Table Hole, as well as a healthy supply of basic arrows from Kali the Merchant, who's situated in the Church of Ella at the start of the game. After traveling north along the shoreline, you'll find a ton of birds hanging out near some rocks and driftwood as well as in the water. You can kill them in any way you like, but a ranged weapon or magic makes this task infinitely easier. What you're after here is four-toed foul feet, which is an important ingredient that you'll spend most of your time looking for, and getting a metric ton of them can be a chore since they're randomly generated and not ground loot. They can be farmed in a few different locations, but this one seems the most practical, and after a long afternoon of bird hunting, you can stash your pile of four-toed feet and head off in search of the final ingredient. The last ingredient for your gold-pickled foul feet can be found just about anywhere you look. However, if you want it quick and in bulk, my favorite place to farm it is Laerni of the Lakes, within a peaceful village hidden on the side of a cliff known as Jarberg. If you follow the highlighted path, you'll reach a spot on the cliff face where you can hop torrent down onto large tombstones where you'll find Jarberg's side of grace at the bottom. In this case, we'll be looking for roa fruit, which is widespread at this location, and not only can you farm a ton of it, but you can also farm a variety of other plants, which Jarberg has a lot of very close to the side of grace. Roa fruit is pretty good to have on hand, not only for crafting gold pickled foul feet, but it's used in quite a few other useful recipes. As you can see from the game footage, all you need to do is ride torn around this small village collecting all the roa fruit you can, and then just reset at the side of grace and repeat the process. Before we get too deep into the weeds finding the next rune boost item, from time to time you may notice a yellow glow around your character and glowing erd tree leaves falling from the sky while you're adventuring. And while despair reveals itself in many forms in Elden Ring, these falling leaves are actually a random weather effect designed to give you a little boost, but it only occurs in certain areas. The buff you receive while Erd Tree leaves are falling increases the amount of runes you obtain from enemies by 17%, which stacks with other rune boost items. This buff is automatically applied to your character when standing close to or under falling Erd Tree leaves. This particular buff only lasts for a short duration, and while it's a rare and pretty sexy looking weather effect, if you're bringing down piles of enemies, make sure you keep an eye on the weather. The next item on the list, and easily one of the most important ones when ramping up your ability to boost rune intake is the Golden Scarab, which can be found at the very bottom of the abandoned cave, which is in a hidden location within the Kaelid Wilds. Using the Church of Ella as your point of origin, if you follow the highlighted route, you'll come across the smoldering wall side of Grace. And if you follow the wall east, you'll come across a deep ravine where you can jump torn across to the cave's entrance. For some, the jump can be tricky, but the real trick is going to be how to wade through the massive amount of scarlet rot that this particular cave is filled with. After entering the cave and lighting the side of grace, you'll be ready to tackle the short but painful run to your destination. So fair warning, this isn't astrophysics, but it's not easy either. In order to give yourself a fighting chance so you don't end up as an earthworm playground, you'll need to make a pit stop to pick up some preserving boluses at one of the traveling merchants in Kaelid, who's located just a stone's throw away from the Astray from Kaelid North side of Grace. Preserving boluses alleviate any scarlet rot buildup that you'll come across within the cave while navigating to the bottom to face off with its boss. So what is Scarlet Rot exactly? Well, in simple terms, it's quite possibly one of the worst status effects in the lands between, and it's likely responsible for a few broken controllers. This particular Rot variant is the same as the variant from the Swamp of Aeonia, which inflicts damage calculated by multiplying 0.2% of your maximum hit points, plus an additional 8 points of damage every second for 180 seconds. The good news is, is that your resistance to Scarlet Rod is determined by your immunity stat, which is increased by leveling up your vigor. So the more vigor you have, the easier it is to go the distance when you're knee deep in it. After surviving your harrowing journey to the bottom of the cave, the last challenge that you're going to face is beyond the yellow fog door at the bottom. And for some, it's really not that easy when you're just starting out. You'll need to face down not one, but two clean rot knights, one wielding a clean rot spear and the other a halo side. 
While there are a few different strategies to come out on top in this engagement, the strategy that I used here is pretty straightforward. Call forth some wolf spirits to run some interference and F and send it. Each of these knights have just a little over 2,000 hit points and they're immune to Scarlet Rot, Madness, and have a fair amount of resistances to other status effects as well. As you can see from the game footage, the wolves do a pretty good job of distracting the knight so you can sidestep behind it to land a few critical hits, which is huge since you really want to bring at least one of them down as quickly as possible. After all, a one-on-one -on -one fight makes things infinitely easier. While I typically believe offense is the best defense in this scenario, there are other ways to go about it. The truth is that both of these heavy hitting knights have some pretty annoying attacks at their disposal, especially the Halo side knight, who seems to spam Mikkel's ring of light at you, which tends to keep you on your heels. So if you want to bring him down first so you're not constantly harassed by flying rings of light, that's a solid option as well. It's important to note that you should leave at least one of your preserving boluses in reserve for this fight since between their weapons and rot vomit attacks you can end up needing to cure yourself of rot by the end of the fight. Once you bring down both knights and complete the boss fight you'll be rewarded with the golden scarab which is a unique talisman that increases rune acquisition by 20% and it stacks with other rune boost items and game mechanics. Before moving on to the next rune boost mechanic that you can actually control, it's interesting to note that there's another random aspect to the game that increases the amount of runes a single enemy can drop, and it can even happen at some of the more popular rune farming spots in the game. There are times that you'll run into enemies whose eyes are glowing with a gold light, not to be confused with enemies with orange eyes which is indicative of madness, but these enemies who have golden eyes will drop 5 times their usual amount of runes, which as you can see from the game footage is quite a bit. So whether you're racking up a ton of runes at your favorite farming spot, or you just happen to encounter an enemy with eyes that are glowing with an unusually bright yellow light, it may be worth the 5x bonus to just stop and bring it down. One of the more interesting mechanics that you can control that's been a part of other From Software games in the past but rarely talked about is called Overkill. Overkill is achieved when you defeat an enemy with an attack that does over 150% of its max health awarding you with 20% more runes for that particular kill. The easiest way to illustrate this is when you normally attack an enemy in this area, you're getting 2,452 runes. However, if you deal over 150% of their total hit points, you'll receive the overkill bonus which gives you 2,943 runes for that particular kill. This mechanic also stacks with the Golden Scarab and the Gold Pickled Foulfoot, so increasing your damage is something that you may want to consider when planning to bring your rune farming strategies to the next level. For those of you who like to play online and your router isn't made of peanut brittle, balsa wood, and lamp wire, you'll also be able to take advantage of a multiplayer mechanic which grants an additional 5% increase in rune acquisition if someone sharing your group password accomplishes a major feat like defeating a shard bear. This 5% increase only lasts for 5 minutes, but it may be something worth considering if you have a large following in your Elden Ring group. After all, 5% is 5%. And as always, good hunting.